We're here at the Mills and Reeve uh, Mental Health 2012 and uh, Beyond Conference. And with me is Steve Shrub from the NHS Confederation and Director of Mental Health Network. Um, Steve, we hear a lot about no health without mental health. To you, what does that mean? Um, well, I think at its most basic level, it means um, a very basic thing that uh, all of us, uh, if we're going to be healthy, need to pay attention to and get support for developing both our mental health and our physical health. Um, uh, having one on its own simply isn't good enough. And uh, we've, we've worked uh, for many, many years in the NHS and we've not got that balance right. Often the balance has been towards uh, physical health. Um, and I won't bore you with um, uh, putting out a whole load of facts and figures, but the evidence now is huge that if you take an integrated approach, both bits, both sides of that coin benefit. So people with physical health benefit if you give attention to their mental health, and people with mental health benefit if you give attention to their physical health. And when I say benefit, I mean they live longer. So this is not some kind of soft uh, uh, added value. They actually, you add years to their life. Uh, in, some, in some cases, you may add many years to their life. It sounds great, great policy. But on the ground, how are we going to make it work? Well, I think in many ways it's pretty straightforward. We've had a uh, so let's let's talk about commissioning. Uh, up until recently, we've had commissioners who've commissioned mental health services quite separately from physical health care services. Uh, with GPs as commissioners, uh, at least technically, we should have we should have individuals who understand the value of both and uh, can start doing both. So you have a commissioner that actually doesn't just commission services from a district general hospital and then somewhere over there commissions services from a mental health provider they actually bring them both together to start commissioning together so on one level it's as it's as practical as that um, there are some technical barriers to it but uh, but in terms of um, uh, 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 getting things going it's just getting people motivated to understand the huge benefits that you gain from that Sounds like a big change in mindset. How, how do you achieve that? Well, I'm not so sure it's a huge change in mindset. I think when you get people to understand that they, they've got a better chance of achieving the outcomes they're there to achieve if they start to do both together, then I think you, start to, you do start to big, make changes in, 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 in the mindset. But one thing you are right about is, is success is about as much about cultural change as it is some kind of new whizzy payment system or tariff or currency. So some training needed for GPs and CCGs on the issue? Uh, not some training. Um, uh, uh, um, people need the support to do the job. You need support to do your job, I need support to do mine. Uh, it's a rapidly changing world and we need, we, we need ongoing training and development. So they really do need support. And the assumption that just because you're a GP, you'll automatically be able to commission things uh, better uh, without support is a pretty naive assumption. After 60 years of the NHS, or just over 60 years, why do you think it is that mental health still seems to be such a challenge for us in the health service? Um, I think there are a couple of reasons. Um, I think there is something called stigma. Um, uh, and if stigma affects the public, um, many civil servants, ministers, managers, uh, doctors are members of the public. So, you know, there's no reason why they should be completely immune from that. Um, so there is something about, about stigma. Um, and uh, the minister, Paul Burstow, I think, made a huge contribution by this term parity of esteem. So he's trying to drive that change. Um, I also think that often there's just been uh, less uh, effort made in the training of, of professionals. So uh, unless you elect to go into mental health, often the amount of mental health awareness across the rest of the system in terms of training people is just very low. So there's something about lack of understanding, there's something about stigma. Um, uh, they aren't the only factors, but I think when you put those together, you, ac you can actually understand why there are some barriers. And finally, putting aside where you would like to be in three or four years' time, where do you think we will be with uh, mental health in uh, three or four years' time? Um, I think there are at least three exciting developments, some of which people in the audience have heard today. The first is a focus on recovery. Uh, recovery not defined by nurses and doctors and psychologists and social workers, but recovery defined by service users. So 
really very clear recovery outcomes which organisations, whether they're for profit, not for profit, NHS Trust or Foundation Trust, uh, they're funded by and measured by achieving those recovery outcomes. And I think the second thing would be um, this much talked about but rarely achieved integration. If we actually had commissioners in two or three years time who were commissioning both mental health care and physical health care in a more integrated way. Instead of having two or three or four or five contracts, they had a smaller number of contracts that actually had running through them, both a mental health and a physical health element to them. Steve, thank you very much indeed.